Hello and welcome back to uh, my course on how to create a test integration framework in .NET Core 2.0. So I'm using the project that I created in my um, previous post, the Simple Web API project. Um, so now I'm going to first create a test integration project um, that I'm going to house my test um, con uh, my testing uh, framework. Now I've got the projects, now I need to do a couple of things. I, um, I need to install a couple of NuGet packages that we're going to need for this, um, this project. So the first um, NuGet package I'm going to install is the Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.test host. The ASP.NET Core includes um, a test host that can be added to integration test projects and used to host ASP.NET Core applications, serving test requests without the need for a real web host. The next package I'm going to install is the Microsoft.NET um, SDK. And then the XUnit and, and the XUnit. The XUnit Runner Visual Studio that will allow us to um, run our tests, um, and XUnit is the testing tool that we're going to use. I really like Fluent Assertions when um, creating tests because it makes it more readable. Um, no, I feel like it makes it more readable. So I'm going to install Fluent Assertions and um, show that in this um, uh, demo as well. Now we've got the NuGet packages installed, we need to add a reference to our simple web API project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now we're going to create our test context. So I'm going to create a folder to house our, um, our context. Uh, we call it fixtures. And then I'm going to create a class file um, named test context. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is create a constructor, test context constructor, which we'll use in a second to um, call our setup client. Um, and I'm also going to set up a property um, for our client. It's going to be um, an HTTP uh, uh, client is the return type. And I'm also going to set up a field for the server, um, test server as a return type. Test server we get from the test host Snooker package that we have installed previously. Great, now that we've got those two things um, added, we can now set do use the, we can call the setup client from the um, constructor. So I'm going to set up a method setup client, and inside this is where I'm going to set up the test server, um, the web host builder, and call the startup file that is in our web API. Excellent. And now I'm going to assign the, the um, create client to the client. And the create client we get from the um, uh, test server. Excellent. Now I'm going to set up a folder for our, to house our tests. I'm going to call it scenarios. And then I'm going to add a class file called ping tests. Inside this ping test, I'm going to um, call the test context that we've just created so we can start to use it, and then the constructor I'm going to set that up. I 
I'm going to decorate my method that I'm going to use um, with fact. Fact is we get from Actionit, um, and that um, lets it know that it's a test that can be run. Um, so then I'm going to create a method, ping returns OK response. I'm going to add the code necessary to, uh, to do the get um, on the ping endpoint that we created in our previous session. I'm adding um, response.insure status code um, here. Now, I've added this um, by mistake in this kind of project because you probably wouldn't use this um, for such um, a small uh, method. You'd probably use this if you had a lot more computational tasks to do after this so that you didn't have to do that if the status code was uh, not what you're expecting. So I'm removing that. I've added a response.status code should be HTTP status OK. That's the fluent assertions. And we are going to run that just to check that it all passes, and hopefully it does. As you can see, the project's building. Tests are running. And fantastic, the test passed. Now, sometimes you don't, so every time we run a test, um, if we have multiple tests, it's going to create a new test context every time. And sometimes that's not desirable, especially if you're creating a database, some like heavy loading on the set startup. XUnit gives us a um, way to uh, add tests to a collection, which is really good. So I'm gonna show you that now. So here I'm creating a collection folder, a collection, sorry, class. And inside that collection class, I'm going to um, decorate the class with collection definition. And then I'm going to give it the name that I want the um, collection to, um, to be. So here it's system collection. Then I'm going to add an interface iCollection fixture and um, with the, what I want to uh, the iCollection fixture to take in, which is the test context here, our setup. Now we've got this, we can now start to do a couple of things. We can just change a couple of things inside our ping test. So here, instead of newing up the test context, um, I can just actually call the test context itself. So I'm going to delete the uh, newing up, and I'm just going to pass it into the constructor. I'm just now adding public um, so that I can access the test context from my test. Cool. Sort of. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to run that and um, ensure it passes. Now I realise here I've only still got one test and it doesn't really prove that it would um, run synchronously. But you're going to have to take my word for this one, I guess. Um, if you have a, if you have multiple tests and if they're assigned to the same um, collection, uh, then they would run synchronously and they would only use the um, test context once um, for the whole set of um, tests inside that collection. Again, really helpful um, for any kind of database or heavy lifting done in setup. Thanks for watching.